Hey everybody, welcome to X Content Batching Party for June. If we haven't met before on one of these, my name is Megan. I live in Denver, Colorado, and my job on the Egger team is to make sure we get all of you users out there onboarded and feeling really confident about using the software because I know learning new software and learning new systems can be a little bit of a challenge. So my goal for this particular party is going to be to really give you guys a framework in order to get the concept of batching down as well as provide you guys with a worksheet in order to give you some ideas, spark some curiosity and creativity in the status updates that you do go ahead and uh, put into your Edgar library. Now, I know a lot of you did submit some questions beforehand and really appreciate that. So I'll go ahead and get those answered throughout the webinar today as well. But over on the left, or excuse me, the right hand side of your screen, there's a little chat box. And I'd love to see who's here. Just let me know um, what industry you're in, where you're tuning in from. Um, we'd love to keep this chat going throughout the party as well to support each other, to support the small businesses and all of that fun stuff there. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, so Mora is also going to be on. She is my coworker here at Edgar, and she is going to be a fantastic resource to go ahead and ask questions through throughout this. Um, so go ahead and let me know who's here in the chat over on the right hand side of your screen right over here and drop what industry you're in. I'd love to know kind of what um, goals and stuff you're working on there. I am gonna wait about two more minutes here just to give a couple more people some time to get in before we do get started. Um, cool relationship coach, very fun desk. The coaching industry now is blowing up. That's super exciting. Um, lots of coaches and automated systems. Oh, Lisa, you are talking our language. That's super fun. Restaurants in the UK, okay, very fun. Oh, a couple of UK people. Our founder, Laura, is actually lives over in the UK. Um, so super fun to hear we have some of you. Um, auto tech, okay, cool. Dallas Digital Marketing, a couple of marketers. Very cool, yeah. And if you guys wanna support each other as well um, on your own uh, social media accounts, feel free to drop your social handles in here. We love to make sure we're creating an engaged community to be able to hold each other accountable to our batching goals, to all of these fun things. Um, as we're getting started, if you are new to Edgar, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is drop in our getting started guide as well. If you haven't um, gotten this checklist in order to um, get your pre-checklist for this content batching party, this just really helps establish a baseline of establishing your audience persona. And this is super important because it is something that we want to make sure you're speaking to the right person, that one person who is really important to get your message and who your product or service is going to resonate with the most um, and really help make sure you're establishing a story across all of your social feeds so that your brand has cohesion so that when people pop on, no matter what network they're consuming your content, they know your brand and are able to really um, get that great, great um that great resonation with your message there. I'm also going to drop on in our secret blogging formula. I've shared this before on these parties, but if you're new and you are struggling with creating content, go ahead and grab that. Um, blogging is a great place to go ahead and have as your hub of content to send people to, to drive traffic to. And this just breaks down how we at Edgar have strategized our um, blogging formula here to give you some ideas. Um, and last but not least, before we get into it today, this is going to be the worksheet we are working off of today that's dropped in there. I'm gonna share my screen and go ahead and show you that worksheet during the um, time. So you can go ahead and definitely download it now if you'd like to follow along, but I'll also share my screen there. So if you are new to Edgar, what we are going to focus on today is loading up our categories with different types of content. And really, the whole idea behind batching is to free up your time. As you can see on that worksheet, if you did download it on the last page there, I compare it to as if you were baking a batch of cookies. There's no reason to go ahead and get all the ingredients out, stir up that recipe, and then only bake one of them. No, you're going to bake the whole batch. And the same thing goes with your status updates. You really want to make sure that you're doing them in a space where in a time where you can get your creativity flowing and you can really make sure that you are establishing a solid baseline um, in your different categories, giving your followers a reason to keep following to you so your feeds aren't just link after link, but you provide them with a story of who you are and provide them with a bunch of different types of content. So you want to make sure that you're really personalizing all these status updates to your specific industry. I will try to talk to a bunch of them. No, these categories aren't ones you have to use, but 
but they're just ideas to get you started. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Maura will be able to go ahead and answer any questions you have along the way. While I'm sharing my screen, I won't see the chat, but I'll definitely pop into the chat a couple of times as we go throughout this year. Um, if you're new to Edgar and you haven't uh, logged in yet, I would definitely suggest coming to your Meet Edgar account here. Let me go ahead and log into one. Um, and actually setting some categories that you are going to use for your brand. So the categories that you can see in the Edgar's account here are specific to what we post for social media, but this will be different whether you're a relationship coach or a restaurant owner. Um, and these are what are going to be the buckets of your posts. So the types of posts you want to send out throughout the day and throughout the week. In order to really customize them to your brand, your first step is going to be to use this pencil icon in order to rename a category or use this add new category button right up here to add your own categories. So off of that worksheet that I did download for you, you'll notice that um, I do have these different categories set up here. But again, these are just ideas. To, you can definitely customize these to match your own. Our goal with doing this in different categories is not to overwhelm you and think that you have to have a billion categories and load up all of your content right away. It's setting a strategy each month in order to only spend one day loading your social media to Edgar and then setting it and forgetting it and letting Edgar run. So how that actually breaks down, um, and this again can be totally customized to your posting schedule, this map is just an idea to get started with. But let's say you wanted to send out three status updates every day. That means 21 status updates a week if you're sharing three a day. If you want to batch a month's worth of fresh content into Edgar, that's having to create 84 status updates. Now, don't freak out on me. I know that might sound like a lot. But if you break it down and we create seven categories, let's say, that just means having to add 12 posts to each category, whether those categories are things like quotes, other people's content, curated content, tips all of that fun stuff. And then we'll look at the schedule in a minute here, how you're gonna actually place those categories onto your schedule three times a day, and then you're done and you've got a month's worth of fresh content. So again, this can be done at any time um, with any type of map. Say you wanna start out posting just three times a week on Instagram. That would mean, may mean getting 12 photos to add to Edgar to get a month's worth of fresh content. So you see what I mean, it's gotta match your brand. But I want you to really focus in on this this month. If you haven't tried a batching strategy before, it is going to save you tons of time. So this is a really great place to start if you're not sure where to. Um, and what I've done here is done a morning post category, an afternoon post category, and an evening post category. However, they're all composed of the same categories that we set up here. But you can see they're placed at different times. So this expert category here is on Sunday morning, but on Sunday afternoon, you have a fun category. And then on Sunday evening, you have a question category. So what that does is if you have really loyal followers who are checking in on social media and seeing posts from you all the time, you're giving them different types of updates throughout the day so that they're not getting bored with your feed and you're giving them that consistency, something to look forward to, and that really great well-rounded story of who you are. So. As you're getting your category set, guys, start to think about what your followers want to hear from you, what they want to engage with, and all that fun stuff. And like I said, click to create a new category right now in your Edgar account. If you'd like to steal the ones that are on this page, things like asking a question, um, having a personalized fun post in there, inspiring your audience, tool tips, these are going to be the ones that are like um, not only things that are really useful in your life, in your business, but also tips on how to use your product or service, wisdom. Everybody loves to share their successes and failures, and I'll go through these a little bit more. But right now, just so you can get started, think about your categories, think about all of that fun stuff, and start setting them right now. Start taking action. Open up Edgar in a different tab there. In our submitted questions, I did have some questions about seasonal categories and one-time posts. So while you're setting your personal categories, whether you're stealing these, from this worksheet that you downloaded there, or whether you're creating your own, go ahead and set those. And I'm going to answer that seasonal question category right now. So how you're going to go ahead and get seasonal content done in Edgar is to create a category in the same way. I'll show you this in a minute, but I also want to pop this into the chat. If you were one who asked about seasonal content here, oops, 
this link right here that I popped in will outline this workflow that I'm about to show. So if you are in the Edgar and you create a new category, you could do something to talk to the specific time of year. So you could say like summer posts. If you're in gardening or if you're a restaurant person who has a lot of different menus and you want to promote the summer ones only, go ahead and make this category really specific to the season. Um, or if you're doing a promotion for like Black Friday or something like that, you're going to go ahead and uncheck this include when selecting random content to post right here. And you're going to click on save. And you can now see this summer post is a category here. When you're adding your content to Edgar, so when you're clicking to add new content here, what you're going to do is go ahead and check off the social media accounts that you'd like this post to send out to. Go ahead and put it in your summer post here. Write your status update here. Summer update. If you have a link, so let's grab a um, link here to go ahead and place it in here. You can see that you can add your blog post links there. Of course, if you're not familiar with this, Edgar does generate a Facebook preview here for you. You can always pop on over to see what that preview looks like, stuff like that. Um, go ahead and see like if the Twitter card is established, all that fun stuff. Um, if you'd like to upload your own photo, you can always X out of this preview. This little photo and video icon here will allow you to do that. Or this image suggester will allow you to choose an image to go ahead and add, and that's going to be pulled straight right from the blog post article you added in there if you prefer to send a static image instead of a preview. This is an awesome feature for Instagram as a pro tip right there. Once you're happy with the post look, you're going to save it to your library. That summertime post is now going to be in your library under the summertime category. So you can see it's categorized in my library as a summer post. Now this post can live in my library for as long as I want, but not actually send out because this category has not been placed on my schedule. So if you're new to Edgar, your library holds all of your posts. It's catalog of all your posts. Everything you add here will always remain in here. You, all the hard work you're putting into your status updates will be saved in your library. Once summertime rolls around, that season comes around, pop on into your schedule tab up here and actually come on over to when you want those summertime posts to send out. You can either click into an existing category that you have here and change it the category here, or you can add a new category for your summertime post. So go ahead and click into that area. This category drop down menu is pulling from the categories you set. Go ahead and initiate the summertime post category. Check off the accounts over here that you want it to send to. Click on save. And that's now a time slot on your schedule. So this is going to work in the same last in, first out order that your other categories work in, pulling from the library. So pulling the most recent posts you added to that summertime category and rotating them through. Um, so say you've added like 10 posts to your summertime category in the library, and you put that here on your schedule twice, you'll know that you have five weeks, so a month's worth of fresh content. And if you put it on there for the three months of summer, that means you're recycling through your post three times, which is probably a really great cadence. If you've never tried recycling content before and repeating it, definitely give it a go and look at your statistics. You're going to get great engagement the more you share it, the more you amplify your content out there to your social networks. Once summer is over, once those three months are over, come back to your schedule, pop on to this summertime post and click delete here. And if that uh, is completely off of your schedule and there's nothing more on there, those posts again are gonna live in your library but not send out so you can use them the next season. So that's where you can do seasonal content. I dropped it in there for the workflow. If you do have more questions, pop them in the chat or email support at meedgar.com and we are more than happy to get your questions answered further on that. As you guys are setting your custom categories here, and if you need ideas, pop them into the chat and we can brainstorm. I wanted to show the one other common question that came up as you pre-submitted your questions, and that is to send one-time posts. So before we get to our content, know that Edgar is most powerful when you're able to use our weekly repeating schedule. Just set it and forget it, load your content into your categories, and have Edgar's tentacles work for you. But we also want you to be able to speak to holiday posts and one-time posts. So the other way of scheduling in Edgar is gonna be on the post level itself. So when you click to add new content here, same dealio, you're just gonna click off all of the social media accounts you want this to send out to. You are gonna go ahead and check the category you'd like this to go into. 
a lot of people, if you're doing a lot of holiday posts, what a lot of people will do is also create like a holiday category just to make sure that it is really nice and organized in your library. So you could create a holiday post category if you wanted to. Go ahead and put it into the category or just leave it in the general category, whatever makes sense for you. Write your status update here. You're going to go ahead and notice that you have this advanced settings drop down menu. If you mark a post to use once here, when Edgar sends it once, he's going to automatically retire it. So remember on that schedule, it works in the last in first out rotation. But if you do send it once and Edgar retires it, um, that means that it can work on that rotating schedule. Or if this is a holiday post like Happy New Year's or Happy Father's Day, go ahead and use this arrow drop down next to the Save to Library button and click on the Schedule, Send, and Save feature. If you click on Schedule, Send, and Save, you'll notice a day and time you can populate here pops up. So if you put in a day and time for the holiday or like a one-day promotion that you're going ahead and running, Edgar will hold this post out of the rotation until this day and time is reached. He'll send it to whatever networks you've checked off over here. And as long as you use once this checked off, Edgar will automatically expire it and he won't use it again. The post will still live in your library, anything you've added as used once. And you can always use these filters over here on the left to go ahead and select this use once filter as yes. And it'll show you all the posts you have marked as used once. If you ever want to reuse them, just click edit on the post in your library and you can resave the post. So this one here, it's grayed out because it's already been used. If I click edit and I resave it, it'll go ahead and reinitiate that post and it'll go ahead and be able to be used again if you wanted to put in a new day and time to send it out. So those are kind of specialty ways of sending out your content. But let's get back to the actual batching part of how Edgar can be most useful with this schedule content section here. I'm going to pop right on in here. Um, so if you delete a time slot, Jess, yeah, so I'm more did explain it here. But if you do see here on your schedule, just go ahead and pop into the time slot. Just go ahead and click into it. So this time slot here, this delete button will go ahead and get rid of it there. Um, the schedule also has a filter feature. So if you are using Edgar for multiple brands and wanted to see like what you have scheduled for a certain brand, you can always sort your time slots to show only those associated with one brand. This is a really great feature um, that a lot of people overlook as well. So take advantage of that, all of that fun stuff. Pop in to see if there are any other lingering questions before we get going here. Okay, cool. So keep your questions coming if you do have any. I hope you guys do have some category set. Go ahead and pop on into the chat over there and let me know what categories you guys are setting up. If you're running into any questions about it, Maura actually runs our social media here at Meet Edgar. So she is super excited about answering any of those questions as well. Um, so go ahead and pop in if you are struggling with coming up with your own category ideas. Um, cool, Julie popped in. I know how to do a one-time post, but I just don't want to do a Christmas post coming up in June but my, more like it more than once right time of year. Um, so I know how to do a one-time post, but I just don't want a Christmas post coming up in June. Yeah, so if you do set that date and time on the post, Julie, so as I'm saying here, this add new content here, um, next to the save to library button, there is this drop down arrow. If you click schedule, send and save here, oops, gotta check off a social media account. If this is populated, this will be the first time Edgar sends out that post. So this post isn't going to send out in June if it's a Christmas post. If you put in the Christmas date here on the schedule, send and save option. Um, so if this is populated, Edgar will hold the post until this day and time is reached. He'll send it out. If you put the Christmas date in here, just go ahead and pop in here and you can choose any date from the calendar here. Make sure you use once this set off and you're good to go to know that that post isn't going to send out before Christmas day and it will only be used once. All right, guys, so I hope you've had your category set. Now let's start to actually load them. So if you downloaded the um, if you downloaded the worksheet there that I dropped in in the chat and then you started to use these categories or you've created your own, I wanted to start brainstorming ways you can actually use this content too. So Sunday here, if you're starting off with the BD expert category, you can do things like sharing an article that's related to your niche. You really want to make sure that you are positioning yourself as someone who keeps up with industry articles and you are positioning your social media feeds as a place where people know they can follow you in order to get the best information about your niche and not have to spend the time searching online, Googling. They know you've got their back. 
So other people's content can be a thing that a lot of people struggle with saying, wait a minute, I want to send people, send people back to my actual blog. I want to drive traffic to my site. Why am I going to share other people's content? But this is a really awesome strategy. So I'd like you to try it if you haven't before, adding in articles to your Be The Expert category or your other people's content category. Um, some ways that you can really personalize this to make sure that it is working for your brand is to do things like add your own thought leadership to it. Think to yourself, what's missing from the industry? Great things to do is, you know, go on to sites like Quora or go on to places where people are asking questions about this stuff and actually see what they're asking in order to really speak to the needs of your ideal audience. I'd love for you to be able to do this quickly too with our RSS feed and our um, extension feature. So as you guys are searching for industry articles, go ahead and add them manually to Edgar if you're finding them. Or if you go ahead and go to this import tab right up here, if you haven't used it before, this RSS feed reader is really fantastic for automatically pulling in blog posts. So what this is going to do is going ahead and putting in the URL of the post you'd like to, of the blog that you'd like to share content from. So say you wanted to share all of me Edgar's content, I'm going to go ahead and put in our blog URL here, and I'm going to click find RSS feed. Edgar will say, great, there is an RSS feed connected to this. Which category would you like this to go into? So you can go ahead and put this in your expert category, or you can go ahead and put it into your other people's content category or your advice category, whatever makes the most sense to put it in. Once you put it into the category you'd like it in, scroll down, similar to when you're adding content, check off the category or the accounts you'd like it to go out to. Go ahead and then choose if you'd like these posts to be used only once. You can go ahead and mark off the use once here, or you can also choose to have them in rotation. The last thing you have to choose when setting up your RSS feed is either to send these directly to your library or to your pending content queue. So the difference here, guys, is if you're sending it directly to your library, it's going to go into the rotation of your posts in that last in first out order, depending upon when that category is on your schedule. So if it's your blog or if it's a blog that you trust that you know is going to provide value to your followers, no matter what time of year it is, this is going to be a great way to send it directly to your library. If you like the opportunity to personalize it, like I was mentioning, adding in your own thoughts to it, um, or just the ability to approve or reject posts, depending upon your goals there, you can send it to a pending queue here. The pending queue will allow for that approval process. Once you add your feed, Edgar's going to go ahead and pull in any past posts that are related, that are attached to that feed. Typically, most feeds have about 5 to 10 to 25 of them, depending upon how they're set up. And then every 24 hours, Edgar will check to see if a new post has been released within that time and automatically pull it in. So this is a great way to get other people's content in quickly. One other way that you can get other people's content into your expert category right now is with our extension. So our extension is right over here in my toolbar. So this right here is the Edgar blog, but this could be any blog that you are finding out online. If I come over here and I click on this little octopus, you will notice that it pops up the add to library screen right here for you. And then all you have to do is check off the accounts you'd like this to go out to over here on the left. Select your other people's content or expert category from the drop down menu. Go ahead and personalize it. You can see it's going to go ahead and pull in the status update and the URL. Personalize it with any text you like. Go ahead and save it to your library. Um, and that's a great way to quickly get content in there as well. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the link where you can get that extension. Or if you go to our help center and you just type in extension, it'll go ahead and show there for you. Sorry about that little dog bark there, guys. <laughs> um, here you go. This is the extension right here. Um, so for the RSS feed specifically, too, I want you guys to start getting creative about the ones that you can find. So you can do things like add in YouTube channels to your RSS feeds as well. This is a really cool way that you can make sure that you're not only getting your content out um, on multiple channels. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, adding it to Edgar will allow you to disperse that on and cross promote to Instagram, to Facebook, to Twitter, all of that fun stuff. Or you can add in other people's YouTube channels that would be really relevant to your industry or niche. So how you're going to do that is you're going to go ahead and find the channel ID of the YouTube channel you're interested in. 
And then you're going to go ahead and add it into this URL here. This channel ID will just be replaced. And then you'll copy and paste this into the next RSS feed that we looked at there. So I'll pop this into the chat too if you wanted to give that a try. All right. So I hope you guys have been adding some content. Give me a yes. Give me a struggle. I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. Let me know what's going on um, as you're adding in your other people's content there. Again, the three main ways of doing this is to add it manually with your add new content button right there. To do the import with the RSS feed, I really encourage you to add some RSS feeds in there. You know, you can use this to keep an eye on what's going on in your industry there. Or you can use our extension, which is fantastic for making sure you are easily adding articles you find online to your Edgar library. So as you are getting in there, guys, make sure you are customizing these. Make sure you're adding in some thoughts and really becoming someone who is known for being an expert and for curating the best content in your industry. Next is going to be the promo category. So the promo category obviously is a category that you're really going to want to spend some time on because this is how you're driving people to your site. If you're spending so much time creating content, but no one gets to see it, it's not much of a good use of your time. So a lot of marketers do like to say, you know, if you spend, say, two hours writing a blog post, you should spend about eight hours actually promoting it. And that sounds kind of crazy, but it's true. Getting it out onto each platform so that your audience can consume it where they want to consume it is such a pro tip. And with Edgar, we always recommend assigning account connections to each and every single account. So each piece of content can go out to each account, especially for your promotions of your own blog posts, your own YouTube videos, podcasts, all that stuff. If you've been with Edgar for a while and you have all of your blog content and all of your video content in your library already, I want to talk about this idea of upcycling your content. Do things like go in there and actually take a look at which posts are driving the most traffic, which content people are engaging with the most, and start to make a different medium out of this content. So what I mean by that is in your promo category, start to put things like a blog post being explained in video format or make an infographic out of that blog post. Send people to uh, your blog post as well as having a video explaining the main points of it. Video is huge on social media right now, and it's really the best way to increase that all-important no like, and trust factor because you get the face-to-face -face connection, and you're not just stuck with a blank computer screen staring at you. So make sure you are taking the time to do that, even if it's on your iPhone, upcycling your content that way, and adding it to your blog or your promo category is a great way to get more out of it. Another category you consider adding in and start loading content into is a tooltip category. So I like the tooltip category a lot because you can do things like share a tool or a resource for your audience, what they can benefit from. You know, a lot of these types of tooltips um, don't have to just be related to your product. It could be a tool that you use. You know, here at Edgar, we use a lot of tools with our remote company. We use things like Trello and Asana and Slack. And we have blog posts related to the tools we use how we use them best to make sure we're creating the strongest team possible. And that's one of our most popular topics is remote work and creating that great environment and the tools we use. And we become experts on that. So even though it's not directly related to social media marketing, having that diverse content out there and driving people to it has done a world of wonders. So think about these tool tips and ways you can create this kind of content and you can really start to diversify your own. So my goal for you right now is to think of a couple of tips that you can provide for your tools, for your product, but as well as your favorite tools you use in your business. The next category is your wisdom category. So this is going to be about quoting yourself. It's going to be about finding, again, those bright spots, that content that is the best driver, and actually taking the best pull quotes from them, you know, overlaying them on a beautiful background like on Canva or stuff like that, and actually adding it as a text-only post. You want to think about people's consumption habits. You know, not everyone is actually going to be able to consume all of your content um, on the blog. They might be driving. They might be mindlessly scrolling between a meeting for five minutes. They might be chatting um, with their friend and just doing it in some downtime while they were in the restaurant or something like that. And you want to give them the opportunity to still get your wisdom. And that's what these text-only pull quotes are for. So these are maybe two to three sentences that are really gonna let your content shine through and add it as a text-only post there. Ask 
a question. If you don't have a questions category, guys, you are crazy. I see so much about engagement on the questions you guys submitted on that free content action party form. Engagement and consistency were the two problems that were coming up. And oftentimes we forget in social media that it can just be a place that we network like we're networking in real life. So think of the ways you would talk to someone in real life. Start thinking about the questions you ask your you would ask your clients if you were in front of them face to face. Ask them those questions. I always like to relate it to like dating and marrying someone. If you meet someone for the first time, you're not going to ask them to marry you right away. You're going to ask questions, get to know them, date them a little bit. Social media is the same way. The first time they follow you, you don't want to make sure that you're selling right away. You want to ask them some questions, get to know you. Um, so these are just some ideas to add to your question category that do really well on social media. And this is because they provide really short answers for people. So doing things like this or that content or would you rather content, fill in the blank. Um, you know, if you share a photo and say, hey, captured this picture. Um, one of my favorite tips is, you know, just go ahead and Google icebreaker questions or 20 question games out there. It can be really fun to even just read through some of these questions. Um, interview questions are great ones too. If you do interview questions, approach it here is also to go ahead and answer some of those interview questions yourself. You know, think about what the actual idea of your interview is when you're interviewing someone for your business. The actual idea is to get to know that person, to get to know if you want to work with them as a colleague. Same for social media. Why aren't we asking our followers these questions so that they can get to know us and we can get to know them and make sure that it's a good product market fit, whether you're a service, whether you're a restaurant or a relationship coach or um, in digital marketing yourself. So make sure you are asking questions. The fun category. So the fun category is getting personal. And this is all about the know, like, and trust factor. You want to share what makes your business different from everyone else's because every space is crowded and you want to make sure that your business is standing out. So think about the ways of, you know, how is your business or service different? Why did you start it? What drove you? What's your mission? What are your favorite hobbies that you do in your downtime? All these things can get a well-rounded view for your followers to feel like they're hanging out with a real person on social media. So start to think about updates and start to batch these types of updates into your categories. I know that a lot of people are like, oh, that doesn't sound like it's going to help my business. But I promise you, the more you get to like someone as a business owner, the more you're actually going to want to buy from them. We actually had this experience where um, Maura shared an article about the Canva creator, and it was such a personal interview that she um, did. And we were all reading it in Slack. And after reading it, almost everyone on the Meet Anchor team was like, oh my gosh, I like Canva so much more after knowing her story, after knowing the grit that it took her and all the no's that she came up against in order to then finally get that yes to create Canva. And after knowing that story, we were all like, yeah, I want to use Canva more. So think about the ways that you have a story like that inside of you. I know you do. Um, so I want you to share that and think how you can do that in the fun category in a way that people are really getting to know your personality so that they want to share their story back. Ask your followers to share their stories too. That back and forth conversation is really where it's at. Then on Saturday, you can put your inspirational category. Start batching content. So this can be done in a program like Canva. Go ahead and pick an inspirational quote that you Google, whether um, it's a really motivational one or a really um, sweet one or a really funny one, and put it on a background. As a bonus, go ahead and snap a selfie of yourself or a background of your home or office space and write it on there. This could also be a quote that you come up with, some of your thought leadership there. Inspirational content is bold on social media. It's some of the most shared content out there, so don't neglect this at all. And you know, that photo is going to be the thing that really is eye capturing to people. It's going to stop their scroll. So use the photo to stop their scroll. Take your time finding a good one on a site like Unsplash if you wanted to get some. Um, just have some soft ones. That's what we use. We like it a lot. Unsplash is really great. But I'd really encourage you to go out there and create some content this week that's pictures of yourself and your brand and your company to put these thought leadership sites on and go ahead and put into your inspiration category. Once you have that in there as just the photo with the quote on it, in the actual space that you're constructing your status update, I would love for you to go in there and actually make sure that you're telling a story about it. 
make sure you're connecting with your audience in a way that you're letting them know what this photo is all about. Um, it's that sort of really great um, marriage between that photo visual and that story about who it is that's going to have to dwell on your content longer to read the whole thing. So play around with doing some that are maybe just the quote and then tell a story on other ones. If you do that really great photo of yourself or something, tell the story behind it so, again, people can get to know you. So these categories are going to be for your morning posts. Of course, like I said, customize them for your brand, but these are great ideas that you can steal. Um, use this as a swipe file. And I hope you guys have been loading some as I've been jibber-jabbering away over here. But really, if you're following the math that I outlaid on this first um, part of the download here, you're going to want to load four of these posts into each of these categories. So four types into each of these categories. And then place that category every morning onto your schedule. And you have a month's worth of fresh content for your morning category. How great is that? This is coming up with four of these posts for each category. Sounds doable. I know you got this. So let's move on to the afternoon posts here. These are the same categories as you can see. So it's not complicate your life. If you are using these categories, we're just sharing them at different times. So you can see, of course, on Sunday, we're not going to share a expert article on Sunday morning and an expert article on Sunday afternoon. No, no, no. We're going to have a robust feed. So Sunday afternoon, we're going to share a fun category. So the fun category this time, consider adding posts like you couldn't stop laughing because posts. So these are things like, hey, you know, what did you find that was so funny? Um, I'm sure you all saw that really great Twitter post of the dad and kid watching TV together that went viral recently. That would be something that, again, doesn't have to do with your business, but you could tell a story about where you saw that, why you saw, found it was funny. Go ahead and um, relate to your followers who probably saw that too. It got over like 6 million views. It's likely that someone else resonated with it in your following. Or find that meme that really relates to a common um, struggle that your specific audience has, you know. Maybe at Edgar, we would find a really great octopus meme or a really great meme about, oh, I feel busy all the time or something like that. And share that in your fun category. Anything entertaining these days is gold on social media. And even though it's not directly related to your business, this is going to be engaged with more. Your followers are going to like it more, which is a signal to the algorithm to serve them up more of your content. So serving them up more of your content is going to mean that later on, they'll be more likely to see your promotional post. So take the time. I know maybe that it doesn't seem like it's working on your business in the way you want to, but I really want you to take the time to share funny content once in a while too. Next is the be the expert category is going to be other things you could consider adding to this category are things like FAQs. While in your inbox, look at your Facebook messages, look at your DMs. What objections come up when people are starting to buy your product or sign up for your newsletter? What are the most common questions they have? Filter those on social media. If one person has DM'd you about it, it is likely that a lot of people have that question. So go ahead and get those questions out. Either type them out in status updates or go ahead and make a video. Video, again, it's key these days. If you want the algorithm love, you got to pull out that iPhone and you got to start filming yourself. So make a video of you answering those questions to let those people know. You know, if you've got a question, I got your back. I will get you answered. And when new followers, those that might be in the top of the funnel consideration phase still and not quite ready to buy or join your newsletter, when they see you answering a question that might have been lingering in your head or one they didn't even know to ask, it is going to be an awesome, awesome way they connect with you. All right, let's get that promo out on Tuesday afternoon this time. So other promo ideas as you're starting to add more promos to your category here is to make your followers come for your newest lead magnet. Take your biggest content driving blog post or video or your greatest menu options or something that is in your business that you know gets your followers most excited about and make a PDF download of it. This is the best way to grow your newsletter. I'm sure you can know that social media changes so often and we really recommend using it to build up things like channels you own like your newsletter. If social media goes away one day, you'll still have all the emails of your clients. So I want you to use social media to think about ways you can drive people to sign up for your newsletter. And this is taking your content, reforming it into a lead magnet, and getting that out on social media so you can grab your, um, your followers' email addresses. 
a lot of people will do this where they'll write a blog post and then they'll have that PDF download at the bottom. Um, and it's a great way, again, to select those email addresses that way. Other things you consider adding to promo category, um, that's not just blog posts or lead magnets, is talk about something on a different social profile. So think about a conversation that you might be having with someone over on Twitter. If you participate in a Twitter chat, or if you participated in a really cool Instagram live with someone, go ahead and let your Facebook community know. Tell them about it. Tell them how excited you are that you create content on XYZ Network to try to get your followers from one network to another. We always recommend building up the network of choice of your followers first. Go all in strongly, but with Edgar, you can amplify all of your content out to each network, which is really awesome. One pro tip here as you guys are loading up your promo category is in Edgar, if you are setting your permissions on the content, so when you click to add new content, if you're setting your permissions on this content the same here, and on your schedule, if your scheduled time slots are set up the same here, with all of the permissions set as well, Edgar will send the same post to each of those to each of those accounts. That's a great way to make sure you're driving the most traffic to your post, and it's a great strategy to take. In your categories tab here, though, if you would like to have a different post from that category send out to each of those accounts, you can use this little double cross arrow right here that says shuffle content. And it's a great way to actually get a different post to go out to each of the networks attached to that time slot when Edgar hits it. So a really great pro tip there. Um, it's definitely something that you can play around with, but just know it's there if you would like. As you are starting to add new content to your wisdom category that you're going to send out on Wednesday afternoon, I want you to start thinking about successes and failures that you could share. Your followers want to learn from your successes or celebrate your successes and learn from your failures. Um, think about a story you could tell about the best advice you've been given or the worst advice you've been given. Let your followers learn from you so that you are creating that value for them and staying top of mind of someone who is really, really on it. Your Thursday is going to be, your Thursday afternoon is going to be to inspire your audience. You want to share some gratitude. Talk about how excited you are to be an entrepreneur and work in your space. Talk about your story about how freaking cool it is to be able to show up for your tribe every single day. Thank your customers. Let them know you appreciate them. Everyone loves to be thanked in life. Same on social media. Share a testimonial. This can be inspiring to you. This can be you talking about someone who is struggling with the pain point that your product or service had and how you turn that around and now how their life is. Having them talk about that before and after is so powerful to grab people who might be on the fence and not know if they're the right fit. If they see themselves in that person's story, they're going to be like, yes, that's me. I'd like to have your product or service too. I want my life to be turned around in this way. So share those testimonials out as well. Express why you love your business. Express your value. Make sure people know that you are a business who loves to uh, love working on it. No one wants to work for a business where the owner's like, eh, to express why you created it, why you love it. You know, here at Meet Edgar, our main goal, our main mission is to make sure we are creating a time for small businesses to make sure you guys are achieving your goals. And it is so dang exciting for us when we get to see all of these fun emails come into us about the success you're seeing, about driving more traffic, freeing up your time. And it makes us super excited. So we want to share that on social media. Think about the ways that you can do that for your brand as well. Um, think about the ways you can create community on social media. At mention a thought leader in your space and tell them uh, and start a conversation with them or at mention as you're starting to share other people's content. Um, and it's a really great way just to create a little bit of gratitude and to make sure we are creating social media in the way that we want it to so that we are creating a space for our followers to have an inspiring day. Friday afternoon, you're going to ask your followers a question. This question can also be related to your own content. You know, think about the ways you can spark curiosity about a certain blog post. So you can ask your audience about that blog post. Ask them what they thought about um, the third article or the third paragraph in XYZ so that it really compels them to click through and read and engage with you. Tell them how you actually constructed that blog post and ask for their feedback. Again, get that conversation going to get your engagement. On Saturday, you are going to get a tool tip, and it is going to be a personal tool tip. This is a tool that might be life-related and not necessarily like an actual physical tool. This could be like, what's your personal mantra? You know, what tools do you live by, what tools do you use to help you live by that mantra? 
how do you relax on the weekends? What tools help you unwind? Whether it's a strategy or whether it's an actual app on your phone, these things are gold. These productivity tools, um, these ways of having that balance in life, everyone is looking for tips on this. And you can provide that to your followers to make that great for you. All right. So for your afternoon post, guys, I want you again to load four more into each of these. And then make sure on your schedule, when you come into the Edgar on your schedule here, you are switching them up. So if this was a completely blank schedule, you're going to go ahead and put the morning time clock in the morning. Again, you're just clicking into where you want them to appear here, saving them. You're going to put the afternoon time slots in the afternoon, and you're going to put the evening time slots that we'll go over in a minute in the evening. If you're not sure when to post on social media, we definitely recommend going into your Facebook Insights and going into your Twitter analytics to see when your audience is online the most. Um, but we'll also go ahead and go ahead. Uh, let's see. I'll also go ahead and share. Um, the best time to post on social media article right here. And this is just a great aggregate study that people have found um, what some of the best times are. And I will go ahead and check in right here if you haven't got a lot of data yet. Go ahead and check in. Use those to do the morning, afternoon, and evening time slot. And that's a great way to go ahead and um, get some data rolling and then going into your Facebook Insights to actually check in on your specific audience because everyone's audience is a little bit different. Um, so for the engagement specifically, as um, Maura was saying, we don't have a feature that does that specifically, but you can dash live engagement as well. So I'm super stoked you asked this question because if you go into your history tab right here in Edgar, you can actually see all of the posts that Edgar has sent out. And on your history page here, under the actual um, sent app, Section, there's going to be a little arrow that you can actually click through in order to get to that post on the network. So you can see right here next to this, if I click this little arrow right here, it's going to take me to the post on social media where I'm able to see if I have any comments I need to reply to. So think about the way you can batch this out at the end of your day too. At the end of your day, leave 15 minutes, come to your history tab here, go through all of the posts that you sent out for that day, clicking on that arrow to go ahead and reply to any comments, see the likes and engagements, and start noticing the patterns in order to see what times of day people are engaging with the most, as well as what type of content they're resonating with the most. And these are really powerful ways to really get ahead of other people in your industry. So few people actually take the time to reply to their followers. So if you're showing up, you are already creating a really huge space that you're being out your competition and you're serving your community. So that's at the end of your day, that's when you're gonna be on social media anyway, but make it the time that is actually gonna be useful. Since we're on this history tab right now, guys, as you're loading your content more, um, uh, if you wanted to know more about like what blog posts people are clicking through on, if you haven't noticed yet, you can actually click on these headers and sort it. So if you click on this all time click header right here, it'll go ahead and sort your content from the ones that have the most clicks down to the ones that have the least clicks. And it's a really great way to, again, start noticing patterns in the time of day people are clicking on the most. You can take your blog post promo category and move it to those times of day or your other people's content category and move it to those times of day better. Um, and if you wanted to dig in a little deeper, you can even click on this new performance history button right here. And it'll show like a little graph of when those clicks occurred, all of that fun stuff. If you've added variations to your post, It'll even do things like go ahead and show you the ones that have the most clicks versus the ones that have the least clicks here. If you're not familiar with our variations, when you click to add new content here and you go ahead and have um, an article or something in this section, there's a couple ways you can use this. This feature was built specifically for Twitter because Twitter does have a term of service that says you can't send the same tweet to the same Twitter account more than once anymore. So Edgar's not your back there. We'll never repost a tweet. We will automatically fire them for you. But we still want you to be able to reshare your evergreen content. So as you're um, loading in any thought leadership, any blog posts, stuff like that, if you're sending this to Twitter, this tool will work for your other networks. And again, at Edgar, our opinion is you always send it out to the most social accounts to get your message out the most. Um, so this can work for all networks, but for Twitter, it will be the only one that it's fired for. If I click to manually add a variation, You'll notice the second text box pops up. 
or I'm able to alter the language that I'm introducing to blog posts. So think about the ways that you might have brainstormed 10 different headlines before naming it. Use one of those headlines as a status update here. Or think about a story you could tell about how you wrote that blog post. Or get a couple of pull quotes and add them in here. You can do that manually. Or the coolest time-saving thing that Edgar has for you is this auto-generate variation. So when I click the auto-generate variation, Edgar's going to get some different pull quotes from within that article. And he's actually going to add these in as social media updates for you. These variations are not going to go out back to back, guys. They're going to go out in the last in first out rotation. Same on your schedule. So when Edgar hits this category, whatever category you've assigned it to, on your schedule, he's going to send the last variation. He'll have to expire it for Twitter. The other networks, it'll still stay live for. The next time the full post comes up in the rotation of your post, he'll send the next variation out. He'll have to expire it for Twitter, but it'll still be in this rotation for the next one. Um, so again, make sure you're adding variations to your posts as you're backing it out as well. Um, you know, in your library here, you can go ahead and notice that you do have a drop down menu right down here that says as publishable variations. We email you when you're getting low on variations for a certain Twitter account, but you can also come and sort your library to show you has publishable variations of no for the Twitter account up here. And this will show you all of the posts that are completely expired for Twitter. And if you wanted to reactivate these, you can just click on edit here and you can go ahead and add in more variations if you want. It's a really great feature to use for your specific content to rehear it on Twitter. All right, let's get back to our bashing. I hope you guys have been adding in some fun posts there. Um, cool. Looks like Mora is keeping up with you all. Um, all right, so. Peter, um, if you actually wanted a comparison guide too, we do have a great social media comparison guide for all of the other networks right here. Um, let's see, it looks like all the other questions have been answered. Do, 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 do. Awesome. All right, so for the last little bit of our evening post for batching, throw your questions in there, guys. If this is resonating with you at all, we can definitely go ahead and chat more specifically. Um, but I'll go ahead and move on to the evening post. If you have more future questions that you want to see, let me know too. Um, but again, for your evening post, these categories are the same as your morning and your afternoon ones. They're just at different times so that we are getting our feed nice and robust. So on Sundays, you could consider asking a question in the evening. For this, you can do things like for your questions category, it doesn't have to be just Googling those icebreakers or coming up with a this or that caption stuff. You can also go ahead and consider adding different types of questions to your question category, like surveying your audience. Ask your audience what they want to learn from you. Ask them what they want to know about your personal life. Guys, social media is such a great place if you just ask those questions. And it's a great way to inform your content strategy as well. Use all the feedback that you're getting, the polls you're creating, all the questions that you're asking about the type of content you're wanting to form your actual content creation for your blog or your YouTube channel. That way you're able to know that you are speaking to the content that your followers want to see. Because if you're creating content for everyone and not just for your followers, it's not likely you're going to have a strong tribe who's really going to show up for you and who's going to be your brand evangelist. Small audiences are so powerful these days. And asking your um, specific audience what they want to see so that you're tailoring your content to it is a really great strategy. Monday evening, you're going to share your beauty expert or your other people's content category here. You're going to show up and you're going to tell them a common misconception that people might have about your industry or your niche and share your thought leadership about it. Share what you think about it so that they know you are the expert in your industry. They know you are the go-to person. And when they're out and about talking to someone about your industry, let's take a real estate agent, for example. If they're out and about and their friend mentions that they're looking to buy a house, your mind is going to come and pop ahead because you've proven you're the expert and you've given them your specific opinion about how, um, how things should be in your industry. Share your values, share your thought leadership, become the expert. And don't worry about repeating these things. I know we're doing this in a way that we're creating a fresh month's worth of content today. But if you don't have time to add new content to these categories next month, don't freak out about it. Because the way Edgar recycles through your content, you 
might see everything you post, but your audience does not. And recycling through it, making sure that they appear on your feed more, gives your new followers a chance to get to know you and your whole story too. And again, it's a great way just to become an expert if you are repeating these concepts. The variations is a great way to be able to repeat these concepts, but come across super authentic and show your followers that you're putting work into it. And it does take work to stand out on social media. And that's why batching and using a tool like Edgar can put you ahead of the game that way too. All right, so as you've started to think about some common misconceptions in your industry and how you can add those to your expert category, let's move on over to your inspire your audience category. I want you to think about the ways you could also use your inspiration category to create a challenge for change for your users. This challenge for change is awesome because you're able to get your thought leadership out there, support your community, and then you can do the cool thing about asking them to tag you on social media when they complete that challenge. You know, for our content asking parties, we do who's added the most content within a week. If you are the person at this party today who adds the most content by next Wednesday, you get a free month of Edgar. That is our challenge to you, our challenge for the better to be your accountability partner. And you can do that for your audience in some way as well and be there to support them. So think about that as another way you can create challenges in your inspiration category. Wednesday is going to be your tooltip category. Other ideas of adding content to your tooltip category is to give your followers a sneak peek into your business. What are you working on? What tools or productivity tips are helping you most right now? Again, let your followers know these things so that they can take your lessons into their lives and be so, so grateful for you. Thursday is going to be promo time. Again, promoting our own content, not being afraid to put our mission out there, you spent a lot of time creating this business, so you need to promote it. So other ways, not only promoting your content or your newsletter sign up, like we had about in the morning afternoon post, other ways can be actually providing a discount that's exclusive for your social media followers. This is a great way to gain more followers into your community as well, because if you're creating a discount on there that is only geared on Facebook, you're going to attract more people to want to keep following you on Facebook, or if you're posting it to your Instagram story, it's going to attract more people who want to follow along with your story. These things are really great ways to really build that consistency into your audience knowing, hey, I want to check their story. I know sometimes she shares specific discounts only in her Instagram story. So think about the ways that you can go ahead and do that. You can also do things like offering first access to like your course sign up or offering first access to your newest blog post if they follow you. That's a great promotion technique to get more people not only to drive them to your site, but to get more followers on social media. Wisdom is going to be for Friday evening. You can do things like find a statistic that is pretty staggering in your industry. One that could be an example for social media specifically is, you know, the half-life of a Facebook post is like 18 minutes. That means your Facebook post is only living on Facebook for like 18 minutes. That's why evergreen content strategy is so powerful right now. And that statistic is pretty shocking when you hear it. Think about those statistics. You can go out and Google and create an article post to it to inform your audience and get them really curious about it. Or as a bonus, you know, make an infographic with that statistic. Make a really great um, Canva background with it. These things, these attention grabbing, stop your scroll images will be really great. And then that really great statistic you're sharing is just a great way to push it forward. Saturday evening is going to be a fun post. How are you wrapping up your week? What are you looking forward to learning next week? As a bonus, they even took a selfie to share with it. This is a powerful way, again, to get that facial recognition and build that trust. Because when it comes down to it, what no like, and trust is, is people having to be aware of your brand. They're having to know they resonate with your values and your mission. And then that trust part equates to the sale. It equates to signing up for your newsletter because they're like, hey, you know what? You can show up in my inbox with my most personal communication. Or it equates to them handing over your money because you've built that rapport and you've built that trust with them. So think about the ways these fun posts can help build that trust so you can get that more elegant sale when your promo category pops up. So I hope you're thinking about ways you can load four more posts into each of these categories here. And guys, this technique can be really, um, this technique can be really different, very weird into kind of however it works best for you. While you're batching, I always suggest doing things like, um, you know, thinking about the ways that you can set up like a Pomodoro technique to do this throughout the day. If 
you're dedicating a day to content creation, you want to make sure every status update stays bright, stays fresh, stays exciting. So maybe think about the ways you can back four of those pieces of content into your um, inspiration category for 20 minutes, and then give yourself a five-minute break. Give your brain a rest. Come back for 20 minutes and batch four more pieces of content into your promo category. Give yourself a break. Come back 20 minutes later. That's four more pieces of content into your wisdom category. Give yourself the space to do this, but batch it out in a day. Get your content done for the month so that you can spend time engaging with your followers and you can spend time actually working in your business form. So you really can get so much done if you do this in a daily basis. Um, so that's going to be the batching part here. Um, if you do have more questions about batching, definitely go ahead and let us know. Um, go ahead and email support at meetedgar.com or DM us on Instagram at meetedgar, and we're more than happy to keep the conversation going about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop on in and see if there are any other questions about Edgar specifically for our features. Um, so for our features, you know, doing things like adding in variations, we went over the specifics on like more. Um, one-time posts, which I do encourage you to schedule in all of your holiday posts to Edgar. Um, I definitely encourage you to schedule it in any like fun posts too. So go ahead and Google like day specific holidays, um, all of that fun stuff like National Octopus Day for us is a fun one to share. Add those things in as fun content. Um, Monica, could you show a recent expired post again? Cool. Yeah. So in Edgar here, um, if you do have a use one post that has been expired, so if you've added content, you can either set it as a use once post right here. Once Edgar sends it once, he will automatically expire it. Or if you wanted to keep it in the last in first out rotation, but maybe like in six months from now, it doesn't make sense to send something out, you can also expire content here. So if you do expire content here and um, you wanted to reactivate it, either one of these can be found in your library. So for use once content, it's going to be using these filters over here on the left. Go ahead and select the use once filter here. Select yes. If this is a post that has been expired already, it's going to look gray. So you can see how this one is gray compared to this one that's here is white. If I go ahead and click edit on this post, and if I change a little something, like just put a, go ahead and put a space bar here or go ahead and put a new day and time in the schedule send and save here, and I resave this post, Edgar is actually going to go ahead and unexpire the use once, and it will be put back into your rotation. Um, so it's a great way, and again, Edgar saves everything that you add in your library here. Um, Edgar will also allow you for any um, of those variations that you need to add. This has a little variation. If you go ahead and click on no here, but you don't assign an account, it'll also show you like all expired content, regardless of if it's expired for Twitter or not. So you can see all of these are gray now. So this has publishable variations. No, will also let you know any posts that are expired. If you're looking for like a certain one, this keyword search box up here, you could type in like a holiday name or something like that. Go ahead and find it as well. Um, let me know if that answers your question there. Okay, cool. Um, so keep your questions coming. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pop on into our pre-submitted questions here and see if there are any I haven't answered. Um, and as I'm doing that too, make sure you keep batching content if you're here to use this time to batch your content out. Um, again, doing the math that makes sense to you, but using that worksheet as a starting place. Um, if you are interested at all. All right, so it looks like the engagement question came up quite a bit. Post variations we done over Instagram. So Instagram is done with push notifications. I see we have a couple of questions on this worksheet here about Instagram stories. So if you are using the Meet Edgar app for Instagram, you know that you can add your content the same way on Meet Edgar. So add it to your library on your computer. You can do really great longer posts that way because you get to type it out and not just do it on your phone. Schedule it the same way. Make sure your time slots are actually connected to that specific um, to that specific Instagram account there. Once that push notification comes to your phone, what you're going to do to um, swipe it is the text is automatically going to be copied to your phone's clipboard. The photo is automatically going to be copied to your phone's camera roll or your iPad's camera roll. When you open Instagram, 
it's your choice then whether you're adding that photo or video to your story or to your feed. And then to get the text, all you're doing is tapping and you're going ahead and pasting it in there. So you can choose to post it to your story that way. And it's a great way to get like a bunch of them out um, and make sure that you are showing up for your followers in your story. So that ephemeral story content is really, really popular these days. And again, doing your discounts and your promo categories in there is a really great pro tip because it teaches people um, that they want to keep checking in on your stories pretty often. Um, if you have, do need more help with that, this blog post right here that I'll drop in outlines the story feature and how you can go ahead and set up the Ecker app to do that. Um, I'm also going to drop in here our survey. If you guys have any feedback about this, we do these content batching parties every single month. Um, but we would also go ahead and love to hear kind of what you think about them so we can make sure that we're providing the best content batching parties and um, really taking your feedback. So if you have the time to go ahead and fill that out, I'd be super grateful. Um, and definitely keep your questions coming. I'll stay on for a few more minutes. Let me check back in with this submitted question sheet here. Um, scheduling, All right, it looks like we've got most of these. I'm also going to send out a few emails to you guys. If I didn't get your questions answered, please email support at meagger.com. And I'm more than happy to make a video to send to you. Um, we also have office hours. If you ever have a quick question that you want answered live in a format like this, Edgar does do office hours daily. Um, we do them at different times every day. We try to get a pretty consistent schedule going so that we can provide um, different times. That demo link that I dropped in right there, you can check back every day. The drop down menu on that link will let you schedule for any day of the week. Um, and I'll be on office hours letting you know anything that you need answered about the product. Um, so these content passing parties are done once a month. Just to get you ideas for your actual content that you're loading into your category setting your schedule up and giving you that motivation that you guys deserve to get your content out there. So don't be shy. Don't let anyone get in your head about not wanting to share your message in the way you know you need to and experiment with different categories and different things each month. So find what message is really getting to your followers' hearts. Um, and come to these office hours for other things in between these content batching parties to ask things. Um, again, Edgar it does work best when you're able to amplify your content, set it, and forget it. But we do have a lot of cool features that might not be as obvious, like your UTM codes, your link shortener, stuff like that. So if you have more questions, come on over there. All right, so I'm going to wait one more minute to see if any other product questions pop on into the chat, and then I'm going to sign off. I will be sending out um, an email here. Remember, whoever adds the most content before next Wednesday, We'll get a free month of Edgar. Um, we did download how much content you all had in your library before, and I'm going to download it again after and take that difference. Um, my one my one math skill is in my job here. I'm not very good at math, but that's the one thing I've learned how to do with spreadsheets. So you can bet I'm going to show it off and do it and keep an eye on you guys as your accountability partners here. Um, all right, great. I'm so glad, Monica. Thank you guys so, so much for coming. It is a true pleasure getting to do this with you. Um, we definitely want to make sure that we keep in touch. So DM us on Instagram and Twitter if you have more questions or email support at theecker.com. Um, and it's truly been awesome getting to hang out with you for the last hour. See you later, guys.